Good morning, everybody. It's, uh, I better look at this, that clock quit working this morning. Well, it's still going round, but it's going real slow. But that one is right. So it's about 20 to 10. And it's a busy morning today. We actually had a day's rain yesterday. Thank goodness. Everything is a little damp, but the sky is blue today. And it's been getting quite cold in the 40s at night. So the cymbidiums are still outside and the dendrobiums on the patio, which is a little warmer than outside. And I like to leave them out till it gets a little colder. I don't want it to freeze, but a little colder. So that's what they're up to. And <clears throat> I was going looking at my orchids and the ones I'm not happy with. Well, you know, if our weather is going to continue to be dry all summer and then in the winter we're going to have our furnace on because it's cold and snowy, it's called dry, dry, dry and hard to get that humidity that some orchids, a lot of orchids, really like. So, uh, I looked at a few orchids and we're going to repot some today. And then this orchid is real, see? <laughs> All of a sudden, the flowers started to, to um, go and fast too. And uh, well, it's about time because I brought it home in full bloom April 10th. And it has been in flower a long time. So it's a healthy looking plant. And I found in the glass vase, they're holding the humidity inside. You can, you can see little, little bits of moisture in there. But the roots are looking really good. The plant is still very healthy. It's it's got its first real tiny little leaf still down there and it has a nice new leaf coming. So we are going to take these little clamps off and I saved them all. We're going to take those off and um, there's some different ones here. Oh, those just open like that. Now that is handy if I happen to get a a double spiker. Look at this. This is really handy. I'm keeping these. These are very nice clips. So we're going to remove them. Okay, now this spike, it is starting to go. The, the base here is going white and they're going quite quickly. <clears throat> so I'm going to cut them both back. Now because it's a healthy plant and I didn't used to do it, but because it's a healthy plant with lots of leaves, seems to be doing so good, I am going to leave. They may just use it up, but I think I'm going to go back to just above this node here. And I did put this up under the gas flame. As you can see, it is already using that up. Already. So, we'll leave that one there. And I don't think I need a stake for it. It's quite firm and beautiful stakes this company used too. So this was the first orchid for those of you that are new. This is the first orchid that I have been able to buy in bark here in Salmon Arm in the BC interior. They've always been in moss and I always right away ASP get them out of the moss and into bark. And I've done really good doing that and that habit is not changing. But this orchid just did so much better because it did come in bark. So uh, that's my, my guaranteed opinion on that one. And so this one here, I think I'll cut just above this note here. Okay. Now, 
these flowers here, they are starting to go. You can see the stem is starting to change color. And what I will do is I'll snip this one off and I'll put it in a little water in a vase. So I don't have a vase handy, but I'll just give it some water. And I'll find a pretty vase later. So there, I'll just leave that over there in water. So that is done. We'll take those off and we'll put them aside so that I can put them where I know they'll be. <laughs> Sometimes I put things where I think I know they'll be, but then I don't remember. But I do have a special place for those. So I wanted to show you that before I start repotting because uh, very good growth on this. I'm really happy with it. And so we'll set it there and then it can go back in its little spot. So we are going to be very busy because I have one, two, three orchids to repot. And I'll tell you why each one is getting checked and repotted. And I'm just going to put my pruners under the flame again in case I need to use them. There we go. And let them cool off because they're hot. <laughs> oh boy, you know, we, we had one clap of thunder yesterday. The first thunder we had heard in ages. And I had been up weeding on the top hill under the big trees by the park. And uh, something must have got in my hair and bit me. So I wanted to make sure it wasn't one of those ticks. And, and I always get reactions to bites. So it was itchy and sore. And I couldn't really see it because it was back here. So here Jack is. He's, he's, we, there's a sunlight in his bathroom. So here we are and he's looking at it. And right when he's about to put some iodine on it, this uh, massive thunder right above our head I swear we both jumped a mile <laughs> so that was the one and only one but it was a doozy and then the rains came so we were happy about that and we did get a little rain before that and now we got sunshine so I can't complain about the fall weather I do love fall so we have a few orchids here to do maybe we'll do this one first Okay, Miltasia. Now, Miltasias, they like to be kept a little moist. Have they been in this summer we've had? I could water it every day in it. I didn't. I didn't. But I've decided to take it out of this pot. This is its little tag. It's from June 11th, 2021. So it's Miltasia Charles Martin Fitch. And they do like humidity 50% and higher. And they do like to be constant moist, which it wasn't. But it's done fairly well. It's been in my north window with a glass window even at the top. So it has been getting lots of light. And I did not put them outside for the summer. I left them in, but they still dried up quick because we still had 90 degrees or, and probably more even in our house. So um, I figured I had this, this pot out in the, I keep extra pots out in the gazebo, but I'm running out of nice size uh, orchid pots. So I'm hoping there wasn't a lot of grad sales this year, so I'm hoping in time there'll be more. So I had Jack build, put some three holes in this, plus it has a bottom hole. And it's I've had this for years. You can tell it's been used, but it's never, never really done anything and kept anything that I liked in it. So I thought, you know, Maybe if we put an orchid in it, we'll do good. So, why did I pick this one for the Miltasia? Because 
It does have three holes and a drainage hole and it will help conserve some moisture as it's quite thick. It will help conserve moisture more than this pot. Now I'm going to make use of something for these hanging pots outside. So um, I'm not sure what yet, but I will come up with something intriguing. I'm going to take this little guy out because I often, when I put a new plant in a pot, I often put a weight to keep it down. And I, I think they just love that. It's like a hug for the roots. So I put a little weight sometimes when they're new to keep them down. So um, apparently it's a light feeder and come this time of the year you quit giving it fertilizer but on my watering days um, it'll still get everything but the fertilizer. As you know I have my schedule. Those who want it, it's freely available. Just send me an email to Carolyn Orchid Friends at gmail.com and I'll put it in the description. So I guess the first thing we want to do is see how it's done. I, ca I can't remember taking it out of this pot for a long time. So we'll see what we got. I think it was doing good. It's been left in this pot a long time. And considering the summer we've had, <clears throat> now this has still got some of some bigger bark and it's perfectly good. And it's got some large pieces of lava rock and uh, it, none of this is going because it's been so dry your bark lasts a lot longer. So we'll see what else we can get out here. I think I'm going to put a little water on it. There. Just to soften those roots a bit because there is some going right through. I'm going to try and very gently pull it out. I'm going to grab hold. Oh, oh boy, it does not want to really come out of there. I'm thinking, I think I'm going to turn it this way. <clears throat> I've never unpotted one in this before that's been so, so hooked in. I think the best thing to do is try and Open it up. Oh yeah, I think I might get some strands of the cocoa fiber, but it's got quite a few roots. If some cocoa fiber and bark stick to the roots, I will leave it. Some of it's just pulling out pretty good. I think I just broke one though. <laughs> I, I never, I didn't know what I would find, but you know, you just carefully go at it and you see the roots starting to come. And see, on the outside, that's about all you see. But on the inside, you see a few more. And I can sort of get those roots away pretty easily. Those roots are quite dry because they've been in the cocoa fiber on the outside and nothing to hold the humidity in. But the cocoa fiber does kind of start to deteriorate in time. So it's been in this pot since I got it.
some of them may may break but I didn't want I wa didn't want to go through the winter in in this pot any longer because I could see the ones that were poking through were quite dry boy we've got such big plans for well we have a uh, that wooden fence the neighbors are taking down and we're putting up a chain link fence and that is going to happen about October 20th and then we got it that's where all our raspberries were along the that's where all the raspberries were along the fence so the vegetable garden which I worked too hard for me I don't want to keep hoeing and weeding that huge garden. And there is a trouble with the weeds. So I'm going to put matting down and we're going to get a few more fruit trees. It's going to be our fruit garden out there. We have plans for that. And then over here, we have ordered special containers. You're going to love them. I do. There's something that doesn't need painting, but you'll get a big surprise that are going to run all up that fence going to take quite a bit of soil, some from our garden and some bought, bought soil. So it's going to be quite fun because I found the things I've been growing in the big pots have done really well and still are doing well. And it's not using so much water because I'm not watering a whole big garden. I'll be watering the fruit trees, but uh, as far as little plants and weeds, so... That's going to be in the, there we are. I think we, we did pretty well. And I keep this, this good compost, so we'll put it down there. And we'll just pick these last pieces off. Because they are deteriorating. I think here comes Jack. He always comes for his coffee break about 10. But. He's going to be in a video this morning. I had him drill. He's always happening. You guys, brave people that on your own, and I did do a glass bowl, but on your own, you actually drilled some holes in some pots. I'm proud of you because Jack does all mine because I'm spoiled. <laughs> he did make me do that one in the glass bowl. Okay, now we're getting something. This is what we got. We got some nice fruits. Now, this bark that shakes out, I will shake out. Now, the plant itself is looking pretty good. So, um, let's just see what wants to shake out. Not much. I, and I'm going to just leave them. Because, you know, you start trying to pull bark away and it just, it, it just might be more trouble than it's worth. So, I'm going to give it a little rinse. Boy, we are so lucky for that big lake because all of these seeds have been dry. And we are still at least got water in the house. I mean, we got restrictions, but, you know... And making up for some that do obey them and some that don't, oh boy. But we're lucky because when the snow comes in the mountains, as long as we get snow, then it all ends up in the lake for our water supply. But I've never seen it this dry in the, um, let's see, 45 years I've been in Salmon Arm. I've never seen it this dry. So... Now we have our pot, and we do have some bark. I'm just going to pick some of the cocoa fiber out of it, because this bark, I'm going to put some of it back in the pot, because um, I always feel the bark gets natural, natural um, uh, microorganisms in it naturally as it starts to decompose and this is in good shape and what happens is it's good for them so I, I like to put mix it in with the new bark which I've had soaking for three days so 
We're going to put some uh, new bark and we're going to put a little old bark and the lava rock and we're going to put some new bark and a little more old bark because this is showing no signs of it may go a little quicker in, in this bowl but we'll keep our eye on it so the reason i picked this one is because it it will it can spread out quite a bit still now whether i'll get any flowers i don't know but it is looking good. There. It'll go back in the north window. It gets lots of light. In the north window, I've already started to put my, my uh, grow lights on. They run along the whole edge of the window. No, they run on one side of each window and it gives them light in the evening till, till about 10 o'clock. Don't leave the lights on all the time. They don't like it for sleeping any more than we do. So they do need that little bit of rest of darkness. But, so I put them on about 7 o'clock to about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. They get extra light. I think it's going to be very happy. Wednesday was watering day. I try to always water on Wednesdays. And it was the water flush. There. We didn't want to disturb it too much. It has such fine roots. And there's a little root. We'll have to give it home. And one day I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick the little dry sheaths off. Um, there's nothing there. I don't see any bugs in there, but I'm not going to pull real hard on it. I'll do, that'll be a meticulous little cleanup job. And I have been trying to go back, hunt up dates, and date everything. So if you're just getting into orchids, don't do what I did and you just bring your orchid home and you never date it. You see, uh, the No ID orchids, the only ones I got for years and still the only ones. We get no dendrobiums, no cindibidiums here, but uh, that's all you find in the stores. And so until I started ordering them and people started sending me surprise ones, I never, I never knew how to care for them, so it's been, it's, it's an experience, it's a learning experience, and it's good. It's good to always have something you can look and learn about, and uh, keep your eye on. It is, it's very nice. So, there we are, and she looks wonderful in there. So, there's one done. Now, I think the next one we'll do, and I said I'm having trouble finding pots, and I tried to think about what each one needs, and I have um, Falsheriana, Sogol, April 28, 2021, as a tiny baby, she arrived in my care. And she has been in this pot since. Now, it also looks like it has good roots, but it hasn't got a new leaf. I'm not happy about that. And they also like to be pretty moist. Um, they like good light and constant moisture, apparently. It definitely has not had constant moisture. I mean, it hasn't. So we're gonna give it a moisture environment. And what I've done is I've put a little bit of cocoa fiber, not off the old pot, but I have leftover from when I've used it before. Because the holes in this bottom of this pot are quite big. Plus, it will help keep a moisture. And I can keep my eye on it, too, 
so that um, everything stays stays good. And um, and someday I'll find a nice little pot that I like more than that one. But this is, and I've used it. It's just a like a Tupperware. I don't know what came in it. Probably just picked it up and then Jack drilled the holes in it. So, but it has been used as a nursing pot for quite a few orchids. So now we got to get her out of here. Okay. So we know these le these roots. These ones are quite dry, even misting. It's very hard to keep them as dry as moist as you would like. And and this one was outside on the patio this summer with the rest. Um, it was in a more protected area, but it was used to hot. It was definitely used to hot, but doubt that it'll get any flower because it's um, it's only got two leaves. They like to have at least two leaves and then the flower comes under. Mind you, it could surprise me. I just don't want to really break these off if I have to. Just be very careful. I seldom have anything to cut off with the pruners. I don't like cutting roots if I don't have to. But if it helps me to get it out of this angle. They're a little bit more hardy than the little roots of the Melatasia, but okay, we're getting somewhere. There's one out, you can see one here. So now that the smoke is clearing away most days, every once in a while we get it back. But it, uh, it's been better and I've been going out trying to get some things done before winter really sets in. Cleaning up the yard. I hate walking under those big trees though because there's all kinds of things so I don't know what bit me but at least it was a tick because there was nothing big just a little swollen bump so. okay we're getting there boy they sure cling let's see what we got for roots here we got some roots I think it's going to be much happier in its new pot. Well, as a baby, it was a beautiful setup. When it was little, it was it kept it quite happy. Now there's one going way out there. I think I have to cut into there without pulling too hard. But I've experimented with many different, over the years, many different pot medium, uh, baskets, many different things. But so far, my traffic cones actually are the healthiest, doing the best. And the big orchid pots the porcelain ones that you buy, they they do good also. Me and Little Pots, not so good here, I think because of the complete dryness. There, we didn't lose any roots. Better double check. So we're good that way. Put that over there. And how does the bark feel? Actually, this bark... It's not as in good a shape as the other bark. Some of this is 
bigger bark too. So let's see how the root, there's one real long root. Just checking. Nothing rotten naturally, just too darn dry. There's an old, old, old root, like been there probably from when it was first chain potted. Let's see if I can get in there and get that. Okay. Yeah, I don't peel the bark off or it won't damage them. I think there's some old moss still there. From when it was new. So there we are. Real good look. It has some one real long root. It has some healthy roots and we'll be able to keep a good eye on it in its new pot. So I did soak lots of bark. But whether I have enough for all of the potting I have to do one more. Yeah, I think I do. I'm going to put a little of this in. Okay. Whoops. We'll just give it the little twist. I was in Ardeen's. It's a teenage store. Because in the window I saw this uh, Rolling Stone shirt. $24 I paid for. I was never a groupie. I, I never was a groupie for following the, any of the musicians. I had my favorites. I was a Chuck Berry fan. Many, many years a Chuck Berry fan. And lots of others, but I think he was always, for some reason, that's who I like. But, uh, hey, these guys are still hanging in there and at their age, good for them, and they got a new album coming out, and I wanted to um, have some fun about it, too. They've got some really good music, and they hung together through thick and thin and met a lot of years. You have to give them credit. They stuck together. And, you know, many different personalities, and they had their ups and downs, but they're still together and they're still performing, so give them credit. <laughs> I even painted a picture of them one time. It's not one of my better paintings, but it was fun. Okay. Did you mention the Rolling Stones? I did. I said I. Uh -huh. Huh? Here's Jack Benda. Oh, oh, geez, I really oh. have to bend down. Yeah. What do you got that thing looking at the floor for? There you go. <laughs> well, so they can Oh, see. I see, yeah. So they okay. can see. Yeah, I did. What's the new album called? Uh, Hackney. 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 Uh... I forget. No, we Hackney don't remember. Hackney, Hackney, isn't it? Okay, now. I had one more plant to do, but I might be able to cheat for a while and then just repot it. So here we are. We have our other one all potted up. I like to keep them a little high in the pot. Charge the battery pack. Okay. Well, it looks like it's time to charge the battery pack. And you know what? We'll come back and do this one in this tiny little pot that I got from Rosemary. We'll come back and do that uh, soon. Because I'm running out of bark, I'll use the rest in here. And my battery says charge, so we better say goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. And we'll be back before you know it. I, if I have a chance, I'll show you my painting. Hackney diamonds. Hackney diamonds. How can That's, I forget that? Yeah. And just before we zoom out, 
Comes out October 20. Comes 20th. out. <laughs> okay, we'll go around now. Years ago, I did do a painting of the Rolling Stones. <laughs> okay, bye everybody. <laughs>